Welcome back to Your Stories with me, Danny Fagan. This is a series of video interviews um, with participants and members of the TMS chronic pain community. I knew she'd start whipping as soon as I started talking. Excuse my cat, she's very rude. Um, <laughs> so today we have a really cool lady joining us from Germany. Um, her name is Greta and I probably pronounced that wrong, but that's more or less how you say it. <laughs> um, and she has got a really cool story to tell us about her recovery and the myriad of symptoms that she's experienced and the different tools that she's used along the way and continues to use in her recovery. Um, yeah, that's the basis of all I know. Um, she did send me some information about her story, but I've only read it, skim read it. So I want this to be a legit first time hearing her story. So I'm going to let her in now. And we will hear from her directly. Hey, Greta. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. <laughs> so I just gave a little introduction to you, um, but I wanted to leave the detail and all of this story to you to tell it in your own words. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, but it is a pleasure to have you here and just thank you so much for taking the time to share your story with a view to helping other people and just getting out as much kind of helpful information about different tools and stuff that people use and different um, milestones as well that you had along the way. So if you want to just take us back to, um, I guess, back to where it started for you, what kind of age you were at and how, what symptoms came up and, and that kind of stuff. And then we can take it from there, bring it more up to date. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Go for it. Um, well, I can say for myself that I have been not, I, I haven't had one chronic pain or chronic symptom all my life. Right. But I've had chronic symptom imperative, okay. which means since I was 15, I've had something. And I never connected the dots before I came to, yeah, we'll get to that later to talk to Sarna's work and to mm -hmm. Nicole's work. Mm -hmm. um, that this all this is all connected and this is all TMS. Yes. So when I was a teenager, I think the uh, I go to the age of fifteen, back to the age of fifteen, when I consciously I can remember that I had my first TMS symptom. I was very athletic and I was doing sports and light athletic like five six times a week. Mm -hmm. And um, I injured my knee and I had to go in for surgery. And, you know, at the tender age of 15, I went to the physician, to the surgeon, and he was uh, consulting a lot of professional athletes at the time. So mm -hmm. he was a no name. And I'm like, so what's going to happen to me? And when I, can I train again? And how will this affect my appearance? Yeah. And he's like, well, uh, you shouldn't depend on, or you shouldn't think about squatting, doing full squats again. Ever again. Like, you know, when, what if I have to? And he's like, well, when do you really have to? Oh my God. And so I went to the surgery. The surgery was a very standard procedure, nothing major, just one hour surgery. I was out the next day. Okay. What and surgery I, was that? Um, I don't know the terminology in English, but okay. it was, I tore something in my knee and right. they had to melt them back together. Okay. So it was very standard and okay. I didn't get any scars, which was very important to me as a 15 year old. <laughs> yeah. So I started training uh, pretty much a couple of weeks after the surgery already. And um, um, yeah, the injury healed, but I mm -hmm. started, um, I developed uh, knee pain. And I'm, I've never been one to be on medication and go to the doctors a lot. So I just pushed through the pain. Okay. I adjusted mm -hmm. everything to the knee because I now had a bad knee. So I wore a brace. I taped my knee. If I forgot the tape or the brace uh, to the practice, mm -hmm. I was expecting pain. And yeah. I usually get pain. So I was uh, struggling with this knee pain for probably the next 10 years on and off. Wow. 
Uh, new symptoms came to it when I was in, in my early 20s or yeah, with 19, I had my first anxiety symptoms and I didn't know what it was. I was still right. training full, full on. So I was in the best shape of my life mm -hmm. and doctors could find nothing wrong with me. So my GP back then at the time suggested that I maybe talk to a psychologist because she thinks it might be psychosomatic. Oh, that's interesting. The first time that I talked to a psychologist who basically did some psychoeducation with me, she gave yeah. me stuff to read about anxiety, panic attacks, what it does to you why it comes you're not alone with it so many young women and, mm -hmm. and women in general have anxiety attacks it's not dangerous for you and it went away but i developed back pain shoulder pain combined with knee pain on wow. one day like the pain migrating a lot one yeah. day i would have back pain and shoulder pain next day knee pain so it was um it was and I, and I hardly took any medication for it. And I didn't go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. so maybe somehow I knew it was nothing serious. I don't know, but I pushed through that pain. I mean, did, if you never, did the, psycho, did the psychologist ever tell you that any pain would be related to that? Just the anxiety no. you were talking about? No, no, yeah. Well, he had me, or she, sorry, she had me write a journal, like mm -hmm. um, record, pain levels mm -hmm. it was kind of kind of in the direction of mind body work she we analyzed in the sessions how the pain levels going up and what was going on in my life how they might be related yeah but it was nothing like what i know now that they are related and that i should see the connection okay. so it was early work and laying the, the rest the payment for the rest of my life but it wasn't quite there yet I don't know whether she didn't know or it was just the connection was not made so yeah but I knew that anxiety was not dangerous so yeah. every time I would in the in, in the in the years to come when I when an anxiety symptom would come up I would recognize it and I would know what it is okay so this is what she did definitely but I was still okay. struggling with different kinds of pain mm -hmm. um Pass forward, um, it was probably when I was 25, so I had been having this knee pain for 10 years that I took up a um, yoga class. Mm -hmm. I was still doing a lot of other sports too, yes. but I took, for the first time in my life, I decided to try out yoga. And uh, it was Hatha yoga, so it was a lot of exercises and a little bit kind of, yeah, muscle work as well. Yes. And I told my teacher, uh, that I have a bad knee and I don't want to do all the exercises to the full range. Right. And she's like, well, just do it in your own pace, do whatever is possible. And maybe, you know, every now and then try to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So at the end of this one year, I had to move. So I had to quit that class. I was doing full squats for the first time in 10 years. Wow. So um, and pain free squats or just just doing free, squats. Pain wow. Free, absolutely pain free. Amazing. I did not make the connection yet. I sure. did not realize I realize it now that I was not training my body in that yoga class where I was, but I was training my brain. Yeah, the yoga class to trust to go there to dare to go there. Yes. And uh, yeah, I wanted to scream like hallelujah amazing, and fuck amazing. you at the same time sorry <laughs> no <laughs> it was like, it's welcome here <laughs> yeah it's like um nothing wow, that's happens. amazing yeah. yeah um i still like the the knee pain i dropped i was still wearing brace you know the knee brace mm -hmm. and uh, taping my knee until then i dropped that so i did not do that anymore but uh as a TMS personality and not having done the emotional work, of course, something else would pop up. Right, right. So I would yeah. develop a, a, a gluten intolerance at some point. I had I that had, too. Yeah. Yeah, I had that too for ages. And then it just went away. Like, it just went away. It just went away. Because you, yeah. Um, yeah. I got a mysterious ankle pain for about three, four months. I couldn't do any sports because the ankle would just scream. Wow. 
um, I went to physiotherapy. I supposed at the time that that helped, but mm -hmm. um, I know now what was going on in my life at the time and why this pain came right. up when it came. So you could definitely and, connect the dots yes. as to stuff happening. Great. Yeah. And okay. gluten intolerance is the same thing. I know mm -hmm. exactly what kind of stresses I was having in my life, wow, my personal amazing. life, and why my body started screaming. Um, so it, my, my most recent symptom was um, all of a sudden, after two weeks of Christmas holiday, some six years ago now, I um, developed a sleeping disorder. Okay. It would start with, let's say, three sleepless nights a week. And uh, maybe it had a stressor from daily life or whatever. I maybe didn't want to go back to the office or something. Mm -hmm. But it very quickly turned into fear around going to bed every night. Right. Uh, fear of having another sleepless night. Yeah. And um, that went on for four months. Whoa. I was on and off. I was constantly scared of um, another zombie day and uh, just rearranging my plans all the time. You know, wanted yeah. to do, um, wanted to go to the gym, but I was too exhausted to go. So you had to again switch and change up your daily plan. Yeah, and, and just it just becomes exhausted. yeah, it, lack of sleep on its own can drive you. Yes. Nuts, really, can't they? I mean, yeah. regardless of any other symptoms that you might have been having, insomnia is horrific. I had that, that was on my list too. I started making it a list a couple of months ago, actually, to just recap on all the things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what you're saying is, is very similar to my list as well, that I never attributed to being TMS only till recently. Like, oh yeah, I remember when I had months mm -hmm. of that thing and months of when I thought I had a brain tumor and then what I had, you know, crazy insomnia is horrific though sorry to interrupt you Karen. no 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 it's it's perfectly fine um insomnia in the end is anxiety i just didn't right. I, I knew it kind of because it uh, it had the um classic anxiety symptoms i had yeah, learned about feeling. at the age mm -hmm. of 19 but uh, it's still scary because you need to yeah. function you need to go to work you need to function you just basically waiting to come back home and go yeah. to bed yeah. but at the same time afraid that you're not going to sleep through the night again and, and it's then that, it would be, yeah. that time as well when you're lying in bed and you're trying to get to sleep mm -hmm. you're almost battling against the symptom directly you don't you don't feel like you have a choice at that point do you it's no, like you are resisting fully yeah, yeah, you're yeah. resisting the facts there's no acceptance because you're just thinking about the next day and yeah. everything you need to get done the next day. Yeah. But then I started applying on my own because I was on a kind of a spiritual growth path by, by that time anyway. So I started uh, affirmation work mm -hmm. and I started meditations, uh, guided meditations by Deepak Chopra. I love them. Yeah, I love that. And I was listening to them before going to bed or if I would wake up in the middle of the night I would listen to a um, meditation or do some affirmation work mm -hmm. um, kind of develop my little mantra so that I would just focus on that when when lying there awake yeah and um, I got rid of that but just a couple of weeks later I had back pain out of nowhere Ta -da. for God's sake <laughs> Yeah. What else can you take at this point? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So the back pain, um, just your classic lower back pain, I mm -hmm. suppose, like uh, background music there every day. Dull ache. And mm -hmm. Of course, I would go to a doctor and what else was I expecting? Um, they would tell me I had, a, actually I went to two doctors. Um, they, the first one said I had a bulging disc and the other one said I had herniated disc. Mm -hmm. And I suppose I wasn't accepting that diagnosis fully because I still, I still wanted to see a third doctor. Yeah. But at the same time, I adjusted my physical activity. I wouldn't do the sports. I go to physiotherapy. Uh, I dropped dancing, which I like love oh. so much. And uh, so 
on the one hand, I was adjusting, adjusting to this diagnosis. And on the other hand, I was like, wait, I'm not accepting this freaking yeah. diagnosis. I'm not one of these, whatever, 80% who has something with their back. Mm -hmm. like my, it's like a life sentence. I'm not accepting it. Great. So I made the third appointment. And while I was waiting for it, I rediscovered a book on my bookshelf. <laughs> this very bookshelf this very bookshelf is that all your tms uh, reading on that shelf Pardon? is that all of your tms reading on that shelf no no no, no. It's all, <laughs> uh, everything else but uh i just rediscovered on my own bookshelf uh, dr sarno's healing back pain which i had purchased a few months before never touched it wow just, just a decoration on my on my bookshelf <laughs> I had heard someone mention it on a podcast, I think Hay House Health Summit or something. Yeah. And I had immediately purchased it. So I had faith in it, but I had not read it yet. Mm. So I took it out. I after the first few pages, you know the rest yeah. of the story. You yeah, are yeah. you yeah. recognize yourself on every page. Yeah. And um I read it probably in two, three days. I was through with it and I knew, I knew. That's amazing. It. That's, yeah. Do you think that a lot of that kind of pre almost sort of mind body work that you'd already done and the spiritual work and all of that connection that that helped you to sort of just be solidified in that decision that that was what was going on? Do you think that helped you? Probably. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Because I had been open to um, emotional work right. on myself, um, kind of working on my patterns, realizing that a lot of the patterns are learned and they yeah. can be unlearned. And this I had all done already. Great. Trusting myself, knowing my body is my, my temple. Yes. And so uh, this kind of work I had done, but uh, I don't even know what it was. Probably also a mixture of not accepting yeah this is the diagnosis this is me yeah i love that uh, me who had been athletic all my life no and no i way. then at that point i also recognized shit i've had it all my life yeah all this knee pain <laughs> the 10 years yeah. of knee pain all these mysterious intolerances and and pains it's all been tms Wow, Nothing you must else. have been like a mixture of relieved and seriously pissed off at the same time. Like, how could this have happened your whole life and you'd not have, like known about this sooner? Yeah, I, had, this? I had been doing a lot of gratitude work. So it was just thank you, universe, for yeah. sending me this book. Yeah. I needed to find it in that in that moment, not earlier, not later. I still decided to go to that third doctor's appointment. Sure. Yeah, sure. Just to humor myself. Yeah, yeah. Knew there was nothing wrong with me. I was not broken. There was structurally nothing wrong with me. I just wanted to see what else they will tell me. Yeah. And it was um, a kind of a back specialty uh, clinic where they mm -hmm. do a lot of the surgeries mm -hmm. so i it was it was a friendly doctor and it's like well i have good news and i have bad news and i'm like okay bring it on <laughs> knowing what i knew after mm. having read dr sarno and uh, he's like well the good news is i don't really see a bulging disc or a herniated disc in wow. your spine I, I think your spine is he basically said it's normal abnormalities he didn't use these words but he basically mm -hmm. said that but the bad news is that i wouldn't know what to do the surgery on i wouldn't feel fine doing a surgery on you and i know that this diagnosis must feel very unfulfilling for you um that we are not going to do a surgery on you and i'm like like i'm like sitting there and basically laughing out loud on the inside and i'm like <laughs> yeah. okay what do you think it is then what is causing the pain and he's like well i see that your back muscles are very tense and very tight so probably this is causing your pain and i'm like dr sarno oxygen deprivation repressed emotions so i'm going carefully like do you think it might be stress induced yeah like well 
there might be an element of stress and and I would suggest you to take long hot baths and you know listen to some nice music and uh, and read something nice and stretch and just relax your your, your body mm -hmm. so basically he was telling me that it's it's uh, stress induced but he did not use the words but right. uh, and he's like yeah I, I feel like I've disappointed you that I couldn't give you like a straightforward diagnosis and I'm like doctor no. Amazing. More than you can imagine. Yeah, amazing. Thank God that he didn't put you forward for a surgery because many in many times, especially the stories that we hear from America, mm -hmm. are very much surgery happy, aren't they? Like, yeah, any excuse to get someone in for a surgery. The same happened to me when I was in Spain. Um, when I had my diagnosis and all of that, every specialist I went to, they were like, no, no, no. It, like this is really minor in comparison to what people have surgery for here. There's no point you having a surgery. It might get worse. Mm -hmm. I was so frustrated. Like, what are you talking about? I need a solution to this. I never knew about mind body stuff and neither did they, but there was no solution other than just take drugs forever, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, then it didn't take drugs or it did, did take maybe miles. Uh, the first doctor that I saw, you don't get like, Maybe you don't get such strong medication here so easily. I don't know. But he right. basically said I should take uh, two weeks of uh, mild painkillers yeah. and see what happens. So this is what I did. And I went to the physiotherapy for two months, twice a week. So just the manipulation part, acupuncture mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what I did. But thank God I'm I'm one to, to reject strong medication and yeah. And, and, and such uh, in yeah. general. So let's say I book cured my, my <laughs> back pain with Dr. Sarno. So did it get better? Like you went to see that other doctor anyway after you've I read it. I didn't have any pain. You didn't have any pain when you doctor. went to see him. Oh, fuck. Okay. I just wanted to, I just wanted to see what. Just make sure, yeah, get an and opinion. And I just wanted to, I was curious if, uh, if I confronted him with a psychosomatic or kind of mind body approach, what he would say, I was just, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Almost testing him. myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you still, but you still had um, a lot of tightness and stiffness in your back, even though you didn't have pain. No, that went away. That went away. So he was <laughs> just, what was he, what was he addressing then when you went to see that doctor? I'm probably going into too much detail here, but I'm quite curious. What no, did just, he... just that my muscles, my back muscles are still a little tense and tight. Mm which they were, but right. I did not have any pain anymore. Okay. But my sleeping disorder came back. Right. Yeah. Was that pretty much straight away that that happened? Yeah. Pretty much straight away. Yeah. One thing after so another. So this is when I knew that, okay, this goes deeper than I, than I probably even know. Yeah. And I need some help finding out as much as possible and maybe even need help to really help me dig into all this yeah to give you some sort of yeah. resolve like what what what's the work you need to do so what did yeah. you do how did you find other stuff after that then um well at the time so this was what five six years ago um i didn't know about nicole or i i did not know any other tms community except for tms wiki yeah so i found alan gordon's uh, work on yeah. tms wiki so i read all that memorized all that of course mm -hmm. i read dr sarno all, all his books and all yeah. the other books others have published about yeah. tms and um i wrote to alan gordon asking about sleeping disorder and he basically said well sleeping disorder is an anxiety it's just an anxiety of stressful events or stressful decisions, confrontations from the day that your brain is working on at night. Mm -hmm. So this is what you would need to address. And since I did not find any TMS experts, therapists in, in Germany at the mm -hmm. time, um, I reached out to a pain psychology center in LA. Yes. And uh, I worked with a, with a therapist from there. Great. Yeah. So that's the the one that Alan Gordon's part of, right? The Pain yeah. Psychology yeah. Center. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And, and uh, oh. so basically, she taught me in the sessions what you do in journal speak to talk without a filter, to right. talk about your feelings, your judgments, your resistance, your anger, sadness, 
anything negative to talk about it without a filter of the I'm a good person. I'm not supposed to feel that way or I'm not right. supposed to say it out loud. And you did that. Did you do that out loud or you did that writing? No, I did that in the sessions with her. OK, talking to her. Yeah. OK, yeah. how did you Went find that? I can't imagine. Sorry. Yeah, I just I know how much easier it is for me to write down stuff like that stuff really really deep you know awful stuff um without filter how did you find that doing that with someone else um well we went through all the different what nicole refers to or dr sarna refers to the lists mm -hmm. childhood family situation um daily life and yep. personality and uh yeah there was a lot of a lot of stuff that I had because I'm such a you know good person and want yeah. the best for everyone and yeah. thankful for the people around me and I couldn't possibly feel negative things about people that I am thankful for mm -hmm. or thank grateful to. Um, I basically learned in therapy how to still love them the same, but admit that there are moments in your life where you don't agree with them. Yeah, and you don't even like them. Yeah. And that's okay because you are doing it. It's better you do it on your own, admitting <laughs> it to yourself. Yeah. And still loving them exactly the same way. It doesn't take away from the love or from the respect, but it's necessary that you allow yourself to feel the resistance or to, or, or resentment towards yes. their their decisions, life decisions, judge them. Yes. And this is what I did in the sessions, which I now know how to do in journal speak on my own as well. Amazing. I've always been one to journal. When I uh, started the TMS journey, I found my old uh, journals from when I was ah. 10, 12 to 21. Wow. So I was just, oh, okay. Did I you have a look through? Is. Did you have a look through yes. anything to see? Did yes. you? Did you find loads of stuff all. about it's, symptoms and everything? screaming tms on every page really and whenever wow. i'm describing something i know exactly what it is now that's amazing yeah um so did you i mean you did the the pain psychology center for a while and how did you how did that affect your symptoms was that something that kind of improved straight yeah. away or how did that go it's uh it's helped i mean the sleeping disorder Basically, what I know now is what I learned from, from, from the therapist, radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. When you have a night where you don't sleep or where you lay awake at night, you just accept it the way it is. Yeah. And Stop it's, fighting still, it. it's still like one of my go-to symptoms today when I have a stressful situation or I'm in a conflict or something, then I might have a sleepless night. Yeah. But it's the way I re react to it uh, that helps me, first of all, avoid the cycle of fear yeah. that it will happen again the next night. And I might even fall asleep because I, I have the tools now to divert my attention from mm -hmm. fear to just creation, creative, yeah. being creative at night that bores my brain. When I get yes. creative at night in bed, thinking about something really nice and creative, it's my brain is is bored, and I go to say, "Well, I'm not keeping you awake for that. That's not fun. <laughs> I'd like it. to keep you awake for fear, but since right. you're not doing it, I'm I'm, I'm yeah, because you're you're calmer when you're thinking about stuff like yeah. that. It's uh yeah, you're not in that fear pain cycle. So um, where does that does that kind of bring us how long ago was that is that relatively recent then that that happened that you did the pain psychology center or when when was that well this 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 was um 2015 that i started when i had the sleeping disorder back mm -hmm. pain back to sleeping disorder um this is when i started and uh, the symptoms went away pretty quickly but i um i continued the therapy because first of all i liked it yeah and I like my therapist. And secondly, it's just so much to to discover about oneself, about yeah. uh, about the past, about all these different aspects of of TMS, or mind body work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just good to just talk to somebody without a filter. Totally. And uh, 
I, I hope that one day having a therapist is just as normal as having a GP. Yeah, me too. People, I think it yeah. has to be normalized. And like the same, the same happened to me that, you know, I got through the biggest part of my symptoms. I still had stuff hanging around and bits and bobs that used to come back and, and bits of insomnia, anxiety and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the bulk of it had gone. But I was too interested in healing everything else, like healing emotionally mm -hmm. became the next focus for me. And and I found the same as you, that therapy and continuing journal speak, continuing the meditation and continuing to kind of research and learn about this kind of stuff is, I mean, it just helps your whole life, doesn't it? It's not like yeah. just getting out of pain is like a bit of a side effect of it almost. Yes, it's just keeps you curious. I'd like to think mm -hmm. that our body is like a, no, it's, it's, it's just seismograph, you mm -hmm. know, the... Mm -hmm the device that tells us yes. when there is an earthquake earthquake yeah yeah and so uh, it's just it's like sometimes i know i'm avoiding something i'm avoiding sure. a decision or some kind of an inner conflict and so uh, i keep you know avoiding it and i know that it will show up in my body at one yeah. point i might get a little shoulder pain tight shoulder or i might be awake at night and uh, what i usually then do is just tell my my brain okay i promise you tomorrow at four o'clock i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna do a journal speak session and anything that you want to tell me can come up right and we can sit together and, and but for now i need to sleep so let me sleep now yeah, tomorrow so sure. at four o'clock i'm yours <laughs> i yeah. love that yeah. That's a really good tip because I know there's quite a few people that you see in the groups commenting sometimes asking questions like when I have an onset of something, what do I do in the moment? Like that's a really mm -hmm. good tip to just talk to yourself, literally have a conversation with yourself. And um, I found quite helpful as well, like to to converse with the inner critic that we have. You know, if you have that voice telling you um well you fucked that up or you know you've done that wrong or watch out you probably messed that up or something like that and just kind of a bit of reassurance and self-talk really does help to settle that down yes meditation mm. affirmations mm -hmm. um journal speak i do it nowadays when i need to when i know yeah. that i can't avoid it anymore same, when same. i feel some kind of a flare up then i know mm -hmm. like okay i hear you it's time let's sit down but uh, positive body work like your body is your best friend and yes. uh it's, it's your temple it's it's the i'm gonna write that down that's have. beautiful your body is your best friend i love that yes and so true it's you, you yourself, your body, your soul, you can turn to this anytime. You don't have to wait for somebody to make space for you, yes. to comfort you or to listen to you. You, you can go for a walk and, and, uh, and be with yourself, with your body and, and talk yeah. out loud or in yeah, your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's your best friend always on your side. I love that. It's so crucial. Yeah so crucial because so many people think that your body is battling against you and hate yep. the symptoms and hate what's happening and it's such the opposite of actually what's happening your nervous system trying to protect you you know it's it's sort of survival mode really at its basic in its and most it's basic form just, yeah and it's just basically telling you girl sit down this is not the way to go forward mm. just pause for a second and just see what's going on what's really going yeah. on mm. i know i can be honest with myself so yes. stop postponing it you know it won't work so just let's let's sit down and talk this through great yeah so you do what, what sort of affirmations do you do do you have your own you said you had some of your own uh, like mantras and stuff like that what, or do you follow um some teachers stuff or like I know you said you talked about Deepak and um, Louise Hay and stuff like that, or do you have your own ones that you use more regularly? I'm My go-to mantra is from Deepak Chopra. I don't remember exactly which. I, I heard it in one of his 21-day meditation. Oh, I loved that. That was great. Yes. 
Yes, mm. and it's so generous that they are for free, mm. and they are always such good topics. Yes. That it's really tailor made. I love them. Mm -hmm. And in one of them, I heard that our core values are to be safe, to be loved, to be worthy, and to be complete. Oh my God, and I love the that. mantra around it is what I said tell it to myself, for instance, says, I am safe, I am loved, I'm worthy, I'm whole. <laughs> because if you sit in Shivers. a meditation, yes, yeah. Love you that. Sit in a, <laughs> you sit in a meditation, you close your eyes and you tell these affirmations to yourself, you will feel some kind of a sensation of fear in your body. Like you might say, I'm safe, I am loved, and you feel like something yeah. is joking. Yeah. And you know, this is the core value that is being threatened in your brain. This is where you don't feel that it's true, that it's right. that it's there. So you can work on that. It's like a little bit of a yeah, cheating chart where to start. Mm -hmm. That's a great I don't know, point. You go, you go to a work situation and, and uh, you feel like um, I'm not good enough or this is, this is, going to be so hard I don't know whether the people would take me seriously or something yeah you will feel that choking feeling yes. or whatever other sensation but uh, when you say I am whole I'm complete I'm 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 good enough mm -hmm. I'm good enough the way I am I'm whole I don't need anything else to complete me basically it's behind that. this I love yeah. that yeah it's so true that once you become so aware of your like your somatic experience and how your body is reacting to your emotions, which you quite clearly are so in tune with that, that you can notice when you say something like, I've heard a lot of people say this as well, that, you know, even the Sano list of affirmations and, and stuff like that, that sometimes it feels like bullshit. Like I'm saying something out loud, but I don't actually believe it. So why is saying something that I don't believe going to work? But it's so interesting for you to say that you can actually tell which ones you don't believe and which ones mm -hmm. you don't fully experience yeah. because of that tightness or wherever that is that you're feeling that in your body and that's that's quite a hard thing to I mean it certainly was hard for me in in terms of I've only just recently kind of started to realize that feelings are felt physically mm -hmm. felt not thought mm -hmm. um, and once you tune into that it's like a brand new world. Like, oh my God, I'm feeling uh, anxious about something. I know my solar plexus is going to be vibrating and I'm going to feel mm -hmm. tightness here. Like it's, and it's so weird that it took me this long to kind of realize that. And I'm only really figuring it out now, but it's so powerful because you can almost, like you say, you can almost hear it whisper before it shouts, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because Amazing. you don't, you feel that that part of, of your core existence core values are threatened yeah you don't exactly like you said you don't believe that you are safe you don't yeah. believe that you are loved right and um, when you know something comes up like you, i'm loved oh i'm yeah. not loved so where in a relationship do you not feel loved why do you think that you are not loved you can calm yourself and say well my relationship is wonderful and honest as honest as i can get my relationship is wonderful mm -hmm. but why why am I feeling threatened there? Yeah, where does it, it come me? from? Me, something that I'm kind of in my mind, my brain is creating some kind of a threat that doesn't exist. Yeah. Or do I need to dig deeper and and find out where in my life I am? I don't feel loved, for instance. Amazing. That's such a another great thing that that helped me a lot is something um, Gabrielle Bernstein, also another guru that I yeah, followed. Yeah, I love Gabby. Yeah. Religiously before before the mind body work, and mm. um, she said, I don't know whether the quote is from her. Fear, fear. The, the letters fear is false evidence appearing real. Mm. I love that. Fear is is almost always unless somebody is threatening you with a gun or there is a, a tiger in yeah. standing sitting on your lap. Um, wow. it's, always, it's always in the future it's your yes. brain statistics it's perceived threats isn't yes. it yeah 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 so um fear one of also one of my biggest topics um monkey minds usually have a lot of fear ideas yeah 
um, this uh, this helped me a lot to understand that even if I'm afraid, it hasn't happened yet. So mm. I only have the statistics and how my brain in, uh, interprets the statistics. This, yeah. this could happen again, but I don't have the proof because no, sure. it hasn't happened yet. So of course, when a tiger attacks me or when a tiger is, is, is you know, roaring at the, in front of me, then I will know that this fear is now, it's happening now. But for most of the other things, it's in the future. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. That's a really good point. So where, yeah. where, what happened next for you then? This is kind of bringing you kind of up to, up to present day almost now. So you continued doing journaling as and when you needed it. Are you still seeing the, the therapist? I'm seeing that? the therapist, but more for the reasons of just catching up and just, mm -hmm. it's just fun. I like her personality right. and uh, she has always something new. To tell me and I can just load this off on someone like it's like a talking diary yeah so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just enjoy it I don't always need it but it's just good to it's good practice yeah, it's just just a daily cleaning <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. So do you do you still struggle with any kind of symptoms now or do you still get any symptom imperatives coming up or is that something that you think just comes back now and again for you? Um, well, like I mentioned, the monkey mind. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't think you can tame that very easily. <laughs> I think you're born Please with it. Please don't tell me that. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. So the monkey mind keeps me busy every now and then. And uh, I might have a sleepless night. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's rare. And I usually know why why I'm having that sleepless night. Right. And um, I usually know how to help myself and journal the next day or make a decision which I've been putting off, for instance, or. Yeah, um, it guides you to, to deal yeah. with something that needs to be dealt with, right? Rather yeah. than yeah. it just becoming an issue. Well, that's yeah. good, I suppose. That is that is the survival tactics that we kind of need in our life anyway, right? It's like, it would be bad bad thing if those things were deleted from our existence completely. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So um, what you did, you mentioned in the questions that you sent, uh, the answers that you sent me in the beginning that you had some really good like journaling discoveries and and stuff that you kind of found out about yourself along the way. Is there anything that you could think of to pinpoint that you'd think would be helpful for other people to to understand from that journey for you um, that they might be able to resonate with? Um, well, one of the big topics was learned patterns. Mm. Uh, I know that people often say like, why do you always have to go to the childhood? And you know, it's all this psycho stuff. Yeah. They're like, why do I, I'm having pain now? So why do I have to go all the way to the childhood to find out why I'm having pain today? Yeah. But I strongly believe in, in digging in your past to find out, like, even if your parents, well, I'm, I come from a broken home, a divorced mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of stuff was going on there. Um, but even if your parents were the sweetest creatures on earth and they tried to do everything right, it can still happen that something for you as a child yeah. was off. And yeah, it's, it's the way that you respond you. to you respond to scenarios, not necessarily things that happened or things that happened to you. It's, uh, yeah, it's the way that you reacted to, to certain situations. And it doesn't even have to be parents. It can be, I don't know, grandparents, yeah. teacher, yeah, school, somebody whatever, you yeah. looked up to as, as a child mm -hmm. or as a teenager, uh, friends, not having friends as a teenager, um, yeah. being bullied at school, being a bully yourself. Yes. So it, it, it can be a lot of things that happened in the past and uh, I know that a lot of my patterns especially in relationships were learned from my grandparents from my own parents mm -hmm. and uh, realizing that I can unlearn them consciously was a big breakthrough yeah that's massive yeah so that was something that I worked hard on already before uh, the mind body work i was was working on that because i i knew that this is going to help me a lot yeah and those patterns can be broken and like um 
you know, it doesn't have to be like a hereditary problem that gets passed on through yeah. the family. Then it, it ends with you. I love that. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. And speaking, like being honest about emotions, I mentioned this, just yes. um, admitting to yourself when you don't like somebody that you love at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's really, and, it's really odd thing to do, isn't it? You yeah. feel like you're betraying someone. Yeah. You trained your whole life to be loyal and love someone implicitly, but it's just human nature, isn't it? Like you can't. Yeah. You can't be 100% happy with someone 100% of the time. It's just like impossible. And you can't, you, it's, it's better you do it on your own in journal speak or with a therapist, right. however, rather than like, it's, it's kind of, um, yeah, how do you say? Well, it kind of like blowing up in your face at one point or you right. blowing up in their face at one yeah. point because you've been suppressing, suppressing it. And then at one point you explode and you might, you know, hurt themselves, hurt them yeah. unintentionally. Yeah. Or even maybe, you know, uh, hurt the relationships that it can't be repaired or you have to spend a lot of time repairing it. So mm -hmm. being honest about your feelings, I feel like you are you can go to the other person and still accept them the way they are. You can't change them. And maybe you will need to cut ties, but if you don't want to cut ties, if you still love these, 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 these persons in your life, then you can approach them from a much more mature perspective mm. than when you haven't done the emotional work on your for own before. Sure, for sure. Did you find that, did you find that um, with certain people in your life you needed to create some boundaries with or did you literally go away and do the work yourself and kind of come back fresh to those people or did you how did that work for you boundaries good words another thing that I worked on a lot boundaries yeah. yes yeah. I had to learn to not be the fixer of things not rush in to fix something to make someone's life um, less unhappy yeah uh, where I had no control over that unhappy life in the first place. So mm -hmm. how can I fix it? Sure. All I can do is be there, listen, and just love them the same. Mm -hmm. So this was a boundary that was difficult to learn. <laughs> or yeah. It took some time because you just Not want easy. to rush in and fix and help. Mm -hmm. um, yes, boundaries. Definitely healthy boundaries. Very, very important for healing. Definitely. I'm a huge advocate for that. Um, so where, where are you now then? Tell me about where you're at today, like how, you, how your health is, how your body is, like what sort of stuff you do now. Do you do you train still? Do you, are you quite athletic still? Are you back into, I know you've joined me in yoga, which has been amazing. And um, yeah, what, what's your, what's your life like now in terms of, you know, this work? So I am symptom free and I do my daily workout sessions with a friend of mine. I uh, intend to come to your yoga class more often Yay. now that the holidays are over. Yeah. And uh, what I have decided to do is um, spread the word. And uh, yeah, I'm currently doing a certification course to become a therapist myself. Wicked. Yes. Love that. I don't, I haven't uh, told this to a lot of people yet because I still need to pass the exams, which right, I but, intend to do this well, year. It's out now. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> that's and great though. So you, yeah, yeah, get it, get it going in Germany. That's, that's yeah. amazing. Cause I have, uh, yeah, still I've, um, I have not found that much material on TMS or mind body work. Yes. The way Nicole or Dr. Sarno did it or Alan Gordon does. Yeah. Or Dr. Shubina or mm -hmm. the, um, the I, I haven't found anything like this in German. Yeah. Or yeah. it's very little. It hasn't really brought to the attention of, uh, of German speaking uh, sufferers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So That's I would great. like to, yeah, I would like to, to somehow contribute to that. I love the fact that. I think literally everybody that I've spoken to and me included and knowing like the majority of people that are in this sort of industry, 
they feel compelled to share it. It's so yeah. important. It's too important not to make that word grow. It's like, I feel like it's been the last years, especially since I found Nicole, Nicole Sachs and mm -hmm. the TMS community on her Facebook page or yeah. your community or uh, the TMS wiki and, yeah. and curable community. Uh, it's like an underground revolution. Yeah, it's like bubbling there and more and more are joining and it's yes. it's like something that's gonna just explode maybe in five years maybe Agreed. not immediately maybe in 10 years who knows but by that time it has uh, the word has spread and uh it's so important to spread the word because it's totally. so easy so it's easy, easy. Like, no it's oh, simple it's simple it's simple but yeah. it's not easy yeah. that's it and I think you're totally right. And don't you feel that um, even even since I found this work and the difference between when I found the book and then I found Nicole and now is dramatically different how many more resources there are. Yeah. And I think, like you say, that underground network of, of busy little ants passing on the information to each other mm -hmm. um, in the mind body world, like it's it, it's growing now exponentially. So it's not just I pass information to you and you pass it to one person. Mm -hmm. I learned and now I've passed it on to, you know, maybe a couple of thousand people or and then mm -hmm. they pass it on to someone else. So that is it could be relatively fast how how that now sort of shoots up. Um, it feels like there's a tipping point now, though. It feels to me and it might just be that I'm more involved in it now myself, but it feels like it's coming to the point where it's like almost ready to just go bam and be sort of discovered and you know, found found out more by the masses. I know there's a lot of work going on in America um, in terms of, um, you know, the PPDA and businesses like that that are getting the, the sort of medical model physicians trained and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, I totally feel for like what you're doing in Germany and how kind of relatively unknown it is even here in the UK as well, just like trying to get that word out more and I'm so excited that that's going to happen for you in Germany, like how, where that's going to go for you. That's so exciting. It's one piece of advice that, uh, that I also like thought about so yeah. before we, we started speaking mm. is, um, if you are currently on the journey, like people out there who maybe have just started, I know you don't give a shit what other people think. <laughs> 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 No, yeah, I might, like, I might, might not look like I don't, but underneath I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but like regarding TMS approach and sure, mind sure. body approach to to physically manifesting problems, uh, mm -hmm. don't get in, discouraged if people around you don't get it, they don't right. support it, they don't believe in it. Yeah, or it's very likely it that they apply won't. To them. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't get in, discouraged because everybody has to be there in that space and time. Yes. Readiness is so individual that uh, that's why I say, I mean, I don't know what is waiting for me in Germany if I when I finally have my certification and I can start this work and I want to specialize in that work and not yeah. in anything else really regarding chronic symptoms. Um, um, maybe it's a rocky road, but maybe by that time who knows it's just i can't force anyone no no but i think that but, like the, from what i've seen it is a rocky road but it's it's only really been a rocky road when i've tried to bulldoze this information <laughs> into a hole that it doesn't fit into like yeah. joining fibromyalgia groups or joining uh whatever other chronic people's forums you know and trying to just like drop seeds of information about things in there total backlash total denial total like fuck you attitude mm -hmm. um and i think like you say the readiness is really important like and i've found a lot of people um find this work through desperation and through just having no other way no other place to turn which kind of makes it sound like well is it even real because it's just the last thing people would choose but I think you have to get to that level of I've tried everything else. I've been to all the doctors. I've tried every treatment and now like it's still not happening. There's got to be more to this. Yeah, I got nothing yeah. to lose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly.
and that's that's why it, it, it doesn't even have to be Facebook groups. It can be somebody in your circle of friends where right. you know they have TMS. Yes. And you may mention it, but you can't you can't force it on them, even when, even when you know that it would help. But all you can do is just introduce it and yes. leave the door open. Exactly. They won't, they'll come back. And that's what I've, I've started to see now. At first, when I told people about how I recovered, they were like, what? Okay, great. Crazy? Yeah, they looked at me like I was fucking crazy. They didn't say it, but they know I am already anyway. So they were just like, okay, Danny, great. Yeah, happy for you. But now people are coming out of the woodwork and going and asking me for advice. Like, I have had this thing, and it might just be an emotional thing or a mental thing or a behavior thing or you know, a hip thing or a back thing, whatever it is, like, does this make sense to you, what I'm telling you? And I ask them a couple of questions about themselves. And yeah, pretty much every time you, you have a, a suspicion that something like this is going on. Mm -hmm. If you know about this work and also seeing my posts on social media and keeping in touch with me and stuff like that, then they're kind of now being more curious and, okay, yeah, she, she, she's actually speaking some truth here. It's not just, you know, a load of bollocks that she placeboed herself into fixing her back with you know yeah it does take uh, time time and education yeah. and consistency exactly. and uh yeah keep the door open that's a really good way to put it to just plant the seed and then see what yeah. happens just the the psychoeducation part is enormously important especially yeah. here yeah so this is something that uh, has to be available yes to anyone who doubts the scientific basis of this approach yeah so we have the we have the scientific uh, evidence so just educating just psychoeducation why something is happening and how a brain can be the center the pain center yeah um, how everything is connected how when you have when you hurt your arm it's not your the arm that is hurting but it's your brain's interpretation right. and signal right. into hurts let's mm -hmm. send pain into the arm mm -hmm. so all of this the brain science behind the mind-body connection it's uh, very important to to prepare and from that perspective explain as well yeah definitely yeah. i think it's something that will take a little bit of time i guess to put together for you in german and put all of that kind of stuff together but as you're learning like this is kind of how I did it when when I was recovering I just kept a list of loads of resources that I used mm -hmm. and then just started bit by bit just writing a little bit about them and you'll find I mean you're so knowledgeable like you know this stuff absolutely inside out upside down so I think it would be relatively simple for you to put together even if it's just this you know, the bones of something mm -hmm. either you know a little bit of web content or even if it's just a social group or something like that that you can start to then build from I think it's going to be, um, yeah, amazing, especially like you're probably one of the first people to to do that in, in that part of the world. Yeah, um, yeah so cool. Spreading the words. Spreading it's, so the words. it's so nice to talk to you and talk, like, I'm not ending, I'm just saying that it's so nice <laughs> to talk to someone so kind of knowledgeable about really the, all the ins and outs of all of this and you've kind of, you know, you've done the work inside out and it's amazing to, to just see how far how far you've come, considering you had a book cure you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, for the back pain, the both. coveted, yeah, yeah, the coveted book cure, but it does happen. And I think there's a few other interviews that I've had as well, um, of people that have had dramatic results really quickly mm -hmm. from doing, you know, parts of the work, um, and then continue to do the work because other shit showed up. It's like, that mm -hmm. seems to be really common. Um, is there any other kind of like, golden nuggets of advice that you would have or um, what would you say to people kind of listening to your story now and obviously being really inspired by it but maybe still struggling to either believe or commit or whatever it is and you know having walked this path how this goes um, what what could you what other bits of advice if you have any could you share for people um, patience and kindness be patient yes. with yourself be patient with your pace um it's okay to have setbacks it's okay to doubt um but get back on the path and yeah like nicole always says give yourself the gift of curiosity just mm. 
observe yourself, be your own evidence, collect your own evidence, because you can, you, the evidence is every day, it's there. Why do I have pain in the morning? Why don't I have pain when I'm, I don't know, meeting a friend? Right. Can't do it now, but uh, I don't know, sitting. Why do yes. I have pain sitting, but not lying down? My, for instance, my, my uh, evidence, why do I have pain when I'm lying down in bed sleeping? Yeah, like, me too. I'm not doing any exercise. Yeah. I'm not lifting anything heavy. How can it be that it hurts while I'm sleeping, yeah. while I'm in resting, mm -hmm. rest and restore, actually? Mm -hmm. So question it and be curious why your brain is sending you this, these messages when they are contradictory. So very often, because your brain is just so desperately trying to trick you back into, into the old patterns. Yeah, so, and like I, I think I wrote to you, don't believe everything you think. <laughs> that's brilliant your thoughts are not the truth it's no the vast true. majority of the time they're not definitely 90 what how did i i think i learned it that you have like whatever seventy thousand thoughts a day 90 percent of these thoughts are a bit repetitive they are right. from the previous days they to just think subconsciously the same things so it's not the truth. It's just an association. It's just saved like as a, a memory. Like a practice thing, almost yeah. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a practice skill. Like yeah. when you practice something for a long time, you practice yoga for a long time, you tend to get better at it. Mm. It's the same with, with repetitive, repetitive thoughts. <laughs> you, practice. Say you, got you get really good perfect. at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I think this has been one of the best conversations I think I've ever had. Fucking never mind TMS. I've loved this. This has been so insightful. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've really enjoyed it. And um, I'm really excited to see where this goes for you um, in terms of your own growth, your own sort of work, but also how this goes for you in terms of sharing the message as well. I'm really excited to follow on your ongoing journey and see where this goes for you. I love it. Yes, I'm excited to 2021 is yeah, going let's to be a... kick its ass. Yes. <laughs> Germany, um, I'm coming. Yeah, wait, TMS, you wait. A a home, baby. <laughs> standing in the streets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Um and your English is fantastic. Like I don't know what you're worried Thank about. You. you did amazingly well. Um I would just like to say thank you so much for deciding to take part in this and for sharing your story and your insight and so much knowledge and just great, great advice, like a world of advice in that just such a short space of time. Um, so yeah, keep us up to date with how this goes for you. And obviously maybe we come back on again when you've got your certification and we can share more about how people can get in touch with you there. And obviously I'll help to get the word out about you when you're ready and all of that kind of good stuff and yeah, get yeah. you off the ground. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Amazing. Great. I'm I hope to see chat. you. Yeah. And you Oh, also, would you mind just letting people know what, what experience you had in my yoga class? Because I think you, you left me an amazing review on my website. Um, but I, I always forget to kind of ask people that I interview here that have participated, mm -hmm. like, could you just share a little bit of a couple of sentences, just how you, experience how you found the experience of my class and you know what it kind of meant to you what it did for you well because i knew from the past that uh, I, i'm not practicing yoga regularly and uh, i had this one year one and a half i don't remember when i had this aha moment of doing a full squat so yeah. i i i know about the breath work i know how good it is i know about the yeah how you can choose how intense you want to make it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Even in the in the regular class, uh, you can you can still do it a little bit more, and you can still you mm -hmm. know add a little bit of muscle work to, to if you want to you know mm -hmm. add it, or you just concentrate on the breath work. So I knew that it's it's gonna be good, mm -hmm. and uh, I decided even though I'm I'm um, symptom free, I decided to join because of the monkey mind. Yeah. And just to come back to the center and listen to your soothing voice. I love <laughs> your the tone of your voice. It's so soothing. It's made for yoga. 
It's Love perfect. That. I Thank hope you, you will record some meditations. Mm, I definitely yes, I will. I think your voice would be perfect for it. Mm. You probably learned it from your cat. <laughs> well, I don't know. She, she talks like this. <laughs> I don't know no, that would work I, in meditation. I absolutely love that. I'm so grateful that you're doing this and that you found your calling. And uh, Me I mean, 2020 was a tough year, but you probably the best year in your life. It certainly was one of the best found years your calling. for sure. Yeah. Come out of pain. I mean, this was only, it's only been a recent, it's only been a year really for me since mm -hmm. I found, I think it was November uh, last year that I found, not last year now, November 2019 that I started Journal Speak. So yeah, it's only a year really that it's all changed. Everything changed. Except Just this little one, it. she's still annoying. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I really you can, you can add even more classes once it's like gradually. I mean, it's amazing yeah, yeah. that you've added these two levels. Mm. and people can choose what what whatever they want to do or maybe skip exactly and it's perfectly fine and nobody's judging and everybody's just giving their best and just being yeah. together in a space that is not physical no it's not physical it's completely yeah. secondary and yeah it, you're you're right the the community that has started to grow from the classes is just beautiful like i didn't even consider that would be a thing you know like i yeah. knew that after class, we would have the little chat that we have and the question and answers and the sharing and stuff like that. But just the amount of relief and that the, the support network is is giving people other than the actual work of the class itself um, has been, you know, really beneficial. A lot of people telling me that that kind of connection with people following the same sort of work and doing this, you know, following the same path and seeing each other in class and Mm -hmm. getting to know people face to face is is huge and especially now with with covid and restrictions going on that you can't really do that anymore it's like one step up from the facebook groups and the sort of support that you find there so yeah thank you for that i'm so glad that you've managed to join us and i i hope that you can uh come back again it'd be brilliant to share space with you again greta thank you so much for thank you for joining me i've really enjoyed this conversation and um yeah so yeah, I don't think I have anything else to add unless you do, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call it there. So thank you so much and um, happy new year to you, darling. Yes, it's I gonna was... be a good year. It is, it is, let's yes. keep in touch. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye to everybody. <laughs> bye love. What a sweet lady. Wow, that was a great conversation. Um, I got chills at, in parts there from stuff she was talking about. Um, I hope that you found um, knowledge and advice helpful here. And yeah, we'll, I'll be back once a week or so with these conversations. Um, so yeah, just take a look at mytmsjourney.com forward slash stories for more conversations like this and um, mytmsjourney.com for my own recovery journey um, roadmap, what works for me and to find out about information about my yoga for tms program um, go to mytmsjourney.com forward slash yoga if you'd like to get in touch with me to be interviewed on this series you can fill in the form that is at mytmsjourney.com forward slash stories um, and we can continue the conversation about this interview on social media or if you're watching this in youtube then you can comment below and all that good stuff all right it's been lovely having you and sharing these stories with you i will see you on the next one Bye.